Hey there, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be doing a uh, payoff pitch fast fashion car tutorial. And uh, I'm getting my tabletop ready. I was right about to play a game, but I had a request from a bud. And I'm going to fulfill that request. I'm going to go uh, to the fast action cards with payoff pitch and uh, uh, get game one of the 1961 um, season for the Mets, uh, 1969 season for the Mets. Game one of the 1969 season for the Mets is against uh, the, I'm looking for those. Not against the Cardinals, it's against the Expos. So the Mets play the Expos game one. It's Mudcat Grant versus Tom Seaver. So let's see if I can track that team down here. Uh, Forbes Field. Okay, these are, these are American League teams. These are National League teams. Any of the Dodgers? Oh man. Now I'm feeling a bit under the weather, so just keep that in mind. 1969. Ah, there it is. All right, I found the Expos. Found the Expos, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm doing a and uh, I'm going to do a tutorial for the fast action cards in multiple ways. So I'm going to create the lineups real quick here. Um, is that 69? That is 69. So let me go back. 69 Expos the next game. April 8th. All right, great. April 8th, um, it's going to be, let me get a pencil. I had a mechanical pencil here somewhere. Ah, that one here. But for the for the actual players, I want to write it in using, using a pen. In other words, their names, I can't really see. I'll be honest with you, I can't see pencil. Let me get my some light. Uh, now I'm going to keep it that way because otherwise you guys can't see. So I'm looking for a pen that I use to fill out. Uh huh. Oh wait, no, that's not it. What do I do with it? Ah, there it is. Found. It's one of my favorite pens. All right. So it's going to be Expos versus the Mets. 1969. It's April 8th, 1969. All right, April 8th, 1969. Let me get this more into view. All right, perfect. And then the fast action cards, because that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a tutorial on the fast action cards. I'm just going to use a small handful of fast action cards here. So there's a variety of ways of using these fast action cards. And one of the things you have to do with the fast action cards is you must uh, get used to the, where everything is. So let me go over this. This is your two-sided die where you would look under your pitcher. The two the, the two six-sided die, two two d six would be a four, and I'd go and look at defense. Oh, perfect. Well, if that comes up defense, right? The minute I see defense, I roll defense. I'm pulling another card, and I'm going to pull as many cards as possible. It's going to see potential error left field. Let me get the ballpark card for the Mets. <coughs> The ballpark card for the Mets. Let me let me see if I can find that. <laughs> ah, I found. It. All right. This is important that you see this as well. You need to see the ballpark card to understand that. So I'm going to be pulling lots of fast action cards. I'm going to be pulling a lot because the more fast action cards I pull, the more randomness uh, is injected into the into the outcome, into the result. Okay, so. We pulled, it's going to say error left field. Now, if 
you know, it's error left field. So now I'm going to pull a card to see what kind of number it is. And by the number, I'm going to know if I have to go any further into investigating whether it is an error or it's not an error, right? So error left field, let me just see what number it is. 85. This is going to tell me automatically there's no error. So I'm done. That's how quick it is. You see, because let me prove it to you. Error goes only up to 68. Okay, so the error goes only up to 68. You see that? So then I know if I pull an 85, well, that's above the 68, so there's not going to be an error on this play. So I'm done, and I have to repull a new card. Let's repull a new card. It's an 8. This 8 is going to be in play now. Okay? And let's just say it's a hit. Let's say I, in play, I look, I well, then I would pull another number. 80 is going to be an out on uh, who's first? I think Maury Wills was up first, right? Yeah. I know guys, uh, hey, Clinton, how are you, brother? I know guys are playing the FACs, and other guys are learning the FACs. So I got a request to go over this, and I'm going to show you how I play it. Um, so you really have to learn, like I said, you have to learn where everything is on the card. That's the critical element behind all this. You got to learn where everything is on the card. This is for singles. It tells you. So when there's a single and you want to see how much the runners advance, runner on first goes one base. Runner on second goes one base. So in this case, they only advance uh, one base in case of that single. In case of a double and there's two runners on, first and second, first and third, all runner scores. Line drive into the center field alley, all runners score. So you need to know your single, your double, your pitcher result, pitcher card result, your batter card result. Okay, once you come, you're comfortable with where everything is and what everything means, then you'll feel more comfortable and it'll move faster. Now, this is where you look all the time if there's a defensive result. You're going to pull a card and you're going to look right in this. It's kind of in the center of the card to the right, the right center, I guess you'd call it, of the card. So then. I'm going to pull in, and remember, you're pulling a card. For everything that you find, all the information you get, you pull a new card. You pull a new card for that. You pull a new card for that. You pull a new card for this, and so on and so forth. You're pulling cards. So then uh, once I find out who the error is to, right, and let's say there is an error, well, what kind of an error is it? Well, error is in the middle here. It's hit, error, and out. You got to know that. Hit, error, and out. That's what's critical, all right? I hate putting my finger there. Stubby fingers. All right, hit, error, and out. And if there's an error, let's say you you it, it came out, it resulted in an actual error. You rolled and you did all you needed to do. Well, then you're going to look over here on the shortstop, second base, and pitcher, and it says infield, uh, two bases. So basically, it's a two base error. It's a, let's say it's a throwing error, and the ball flies over the first baseman's head, and it rolls kind of towards the right field, and then the right fielder has to retrieve the ball. So it's going to be a two-base throwing error on the second baseman, the shortstop, or the pitcher. So come back into the pitcher. He throws a bullet to first base, but it's it's in the dirt, gets by the, the first baseman, and it rolls into the outfield, and the runner is going to advance two bases. That's where you look for that. Okay? So we're still learning about the cards. We're still going slowly over the cards. Um Let's say there's a hit. Let's say, okay, let's pull a range. This is another error third base, error pitcher, error shortstop, range center field. Range center field. So then you look at the center fielder's range, and let's say it's a C, and it's 1 to 42. It's a hit if it's 1 to 42. I mean, this is real simple. Center field says range on the center fielder. It's 1 to 42. And you roll a uh, 16, guess what? It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, well, yeah, 1 to 42 is a hit, right? So on a C range, it's going to be a hit. And what happens? Well, you're going to pull a card and find out. You're going to pull a card and find out what kind of a hit it is. And where do you look? Right there. Hit, error, out. You look right here. It was a hit to the outfield. So it's a single two stars. That means runners advance 
two stars. So it's a single runner's advance, two stars. That's how you do that. Okay? So now the way I do it, right, let's get uh, some players here. Uh, let's see. Maury Wills, Sutherland. These are the guys who started, I believe. Rusty Staub, Mac Jones, Bob Bailey. Let me take a quick peek at what's what. So it's Wills, Sutherland, Staub, and Jones. And then it's Bailey, Bateman, and LaBoy. And then it's going to be Han. Oh, no. There's somebody missing. Oh, yeah. It's Han and then Mudcat Grant. All right. Betting ninth. So we don't need the gesture card there. Bateman, LaBoy. Uh, all right. I'm waiting for the uh, some some extra some batting cards that I that I ordered from uh, Payoff Pitch. All right, Sutherland, Staub, Mac Jones, Bailey, Bateman, Laboy, Han, and then the pitcher. Let's look for Mudcat Grant. I'm actually going to play this game. But I'm going to play it in just like one inning worth of this game. So you can see how I play it. Mudcat Grant. Okay, so Mudcat Grant is there, and then he's going to be facing Seaver. Tom Terrific. So we're pulling cards, and we're rolling off of Tom Terrific. All right? Ah. <sighs> Okay, let me tell you, I'll, I use for the SB jump, I use this number right here. So let's say I want to steal a base. I go right here. Uh, no, that's not it. Let's say Maury Wills wants to steal a base. I'm rolling six or less for him to steal a base. So if I roll a six, he gets an attempt. He's going to be C. I pull a card. There goes Wills. I pull a card. I look at stealing. He's a C. My catcher, I think, is a three. That makes him a normal. I just had that memorized. C, C3 is normal. He's safe at second. Had my catcher had a two arm and it's C2, he would be fair, a fair stealing opportunity, and that would be an out. That's how it goes. So in this game, in this game, let me tell you who's uh, catching for it's Bateman. And Bateman, I'll bet you anything, um, is a three. Oh, actually, he's a four, which is actually worse. So that's actually the higher the number, the worse the number. So he does. He he would be at at a very good, very good chance to steal. So this is where I look for stealing. Right. This is where I look for sacrifice bunt, bunting. So if I want Maury Willis to bunt, I'm just going to call the bunt. But if it's a pitcher bunting, I usually reduce one level, one letter grade, because they're playing the infield and they know this guy's bunting. If it's a guy like with a surprise bunt, although this guy wouldn't be a big surprise bunt because I'm sure he bunts a lot, but when, when it's kind of a surprise bunt, I go by the – so this is where the letter is for his, uh, his bunting ability. He's a bunter C, so he's not a great bunter. You would think he'd be a better bunter, but he probably didn't bunt that much. And I think it goes by how many successful bunts you had because a lot of this, most of this is by metrics. So he's a C bunter, so that would be a successful sacrifice bunt. And it's to the pitcher, so it's one to four. It's always to the second baseman. He covers because the first baseman is charging. So, again, I'm not a big bunter, you know, so I'll be honest with you. I'm not a big bunter, so I don't worry about that much. But let me show you. Let me run through a couple of things on how I, I play this, okay? So... I'm going to roll 2d6, and then I'm going to roll my 2 10-sided die. 
I got to make sure they're 10 because I had some 8s, and a few times I rolled some 8s. I even have some 12s. So I want to make sure I don't have those. One, two, three, four, five, and five. All right. Okay, so I'm rolling both simultaneously. So this is how I use the facts. I use a combination of dice and fast action card cards for the randomness factor, right? For the randomness factor. So here goes. Maury Wills is coming to the plate against Tom Seaver. And I usually do it this way. And that's an 11, that's a wheelhouse, right? So wheelhouse automatically tells me that against a right-hander, one to 25 is gonna be some sort of a hit. One to two is a double. And let's say 12, so that's gonna be a line drive base hit center field for Maury Wills. So Maury Wills, Singles off Seaver. So he's on it first, all right? Next batter in the lineup is Gary Sutherland. Now, if I were to use, if I were to use the fast action cards to do this, yeah, but Clinton, I'm replaying the 69 season now. I'm going to use ball stat because it's going to be easier for me. It has all the lineups set up. It keeps track of everything for me, uh, and it's better. I was having to write the lineups in, and I was having to create the the all the uh, um, all the rosters and everything, and it was a drag. So since I was only ten games into the season, I decided I'm going to replay it and start it from scratch with all the bells and whistles this time. All right, Gary, Gary Sutherland and uh, Maury Wills is going to try to steal. Okay, Maury Wills is going to try to steal. So I'll use a fast action card to pull that. Pull a card. It's a two. So he gets the jump, and he's going to go. All right, so he's he gets the jump, and he's going to go. So we're not going to look under stealing now. The next card, pull a card for everything. Stealing. This one's easy. He is safe no matter what. Safe, 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 safe. Out. Only the last one is out. Okay, only the last one is out here. So I know that uh, Maury Wills, Maury Wills is a C base dealer, and it was a four. It was a C four, and let's double check. There's a little chart that I would actually copy this chart and just paste it somewhere so I could always have it. C four is very good. You see, the higher the catcher number, the worse it is. So C4, it's a combination of the base dealer ability and the catcher ability. It's really a combination of both. But a C4 is very good, and that's almost at the top, and you can see it's safe there. All right? So Maury will steal second. Let's write that in. Stolen base. A single and a steal for Maury Wills. All right, Gary, Gary Sutherland is still up. So we're going to roll for Gary Sutherland. All right, it's going to be a six. So Seaver's pitching to Sutherland. It's a six, which is a tough out. That, that's an automatic out. 42 in the tough section, and that's going to be an automatic out. That's going to be a ground ball to third. Okay, whoever my third baseman is, he's going to look the runner back to second, fires to first, and there's one out. Next is the always dangerous rusty slob. Okay, Le Grand Orange. <laughs> Back it up about every seven games. I had one season blow up on me. What do you mean, Clinton? What do you mean by that? And doesn't it back up automatically when I when I go in and out of uh, ball stat? It asks me, hey, do you want to back up the season? Doesn't that back up automatically? Don't say that, dude. Because I don't want to play a whole season and have no stats to show for it. All right. Um, so Rusty Staub with a runner on second. Let me see if I get my Mets team together. My Mets team is A.G. A.G. Gasper Boswell. A.G. Gasper Boswell. Gasper. A.G. Gasper Boswell.
Grody's in there. All right, Harrelson, Boswell. These are all my guys. All right. A.G. Jesus. A.G. Gasper. Boswell Jones. Charles. So Ed Charles is my third baseman. Let me see if I can track him. Where did he go? Probably. All right. I found him in the dugout. Okay. Uh, Crane Pool. Crane Pool Grody. Harrelson. And, uh, and then Seaver. Seaver is a three. So let's look at, let's find a pitcher hitting card three. All right, and I'm looking for something else on another set on a computer. I'm looking for a Don Hahn card, but I don't know if I'll, I'll get that far because this is only a tutorial. I'm not actually playing. I'm actually playing the game, but I'm doing a tutorial. And the ball stat we think the red button is actually ball score. The blue button is ball stat, and there is a backup line on the right. Okay, so when you go into red, actually ball, the blue button is on ball stat, and there's a backup line on the right. What do you mean on the right? Let me see. Let me see. let me go there real quick here. Hold on. Let me close out of that. Ball stat is the blue, and then I, manual game entry. Delete game, delete player, delete edit, 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 ball check, updates, ball stat. Check for updates, ball stat properties, create existing league, edit player, create web, create reports, ball stat entry, data integrity, properties, upgrade, import, data backup. There's something called data backup. Yeah, it's. I think it's, if you, if you let's see, data backup. Yeah, yeah. It says, do not store your backup files in your lead folder. This will result in larger backup file than you need. All right. So I don't know. I think that's it. Backup. I got to ask a couple people about that because it's hard to do it this way. Anyway. All right. So Tom Seaver's facing Rusty Staub. And Staub bats from the left side. Maury, uh, not Maury. Was it Maury Wills? Yeah, Maury Wills, okay. Um, is on second base. He singled and stole the base. And uh, what did I want to show you? Ah, yeah, okay. So this is how I'm doing it. So Rusty Style, let's see. That's an eight, which is going to be a tough, tough pitch, 69, tough 69. And that's going to be a fly ball center field, shallow center. Two outs. So let's see if if uh, our hero, Tom Terrific, can get out of this inning. And it's going to be Mac Jones, another lefty. All right. So that's a four. That's patient. I almost got the defense. That would have been good to show you guys. So patient, right, is going to be a 39. A 39 patient is going to be a base on balls. So that's a walk. So... Seaver loses Jones. Pitched a little bit too carefully to Mac Jones. Bob Bailey now, the right-hander. Let's see if Seaver can blow one by him. Bob Bailey. About a 268 versus righties. Had eight home runs. That's a 12. That's tough. Tough 98. And that's going to be a fly ball shallow left. Cleon Jones is there. Makes the catch. And that retires the side. Okay, so that's the way that works. So again, uh, we're we're looking at using the. See, I roll dice, but when it, whenever there's a question regarding a steal, a sacrifice, I can do this. What is that? Why is it? I have a lot of. Oh, wait a second. Uh, there you go. It's a little bit less 
of okay so let me pull this in the center a little bit more so I roll the the 2d6 and the 2d10 but whenever there's a question about uh, there's a defensive result now it's going to be Mudcat Grant pitching for uh, the Montreal Expos. Mudcat Grant, see if I could track him. Okay, Mudcat must be him in the set with his, his, oh yeah, he is there. All right, so he's gonna be pitching, right? He's gonna be pitching, so let's say I roll a four, it calls for defense. So I pull a card. I look right there. Error, potential error, third base. So now the third baseman is uh, third baseman. I don't know. I don't know Montreal that well right now off the top of my head. Is Coco LeBoy. So Coco LeBoy is the third baseman. On a center field pitcher, Bateman is the catcher. This is the first uh, the left left fielder, seven, right fielder, nine, second base, and shortstop. Okay. So that won't be a question anymore. All right. So uh, let's just say I'm rolling and I rolled defense. I pull a card, and it just told me third baseman. So I'm going to check LeBoy. Now, I could write it. I don't write it because I'm lazy. But his uh, his error rating is a three. Most guys are going to be a, an error rating three, right? <coughs> so I can do like that. Wait. One, two, three. There. So I don't mix it up with, with what position he's in. So he's an error rating three. And that on the, on the Shea Stadium card, let me see if I get this a little bit closer for you guys. Right on the Shea Stadium card, it's gonna. There you go. All right, it's gonna be uh, one to forty-four is gonna be an error. One to forty-four is an error. Okay, so if I would have rolled. What was it, a four? Let's say I rolled a four. This was the original roll, right? I rolled a four, which is a one and a three or a two and a two. There you go. And then I rolled a 91. So then I don't look at the 91. I've trained myself to only look at this. So I don't really know the result for the drama, the added drama. Okay. So I rolled a four, defense. And then I rolled a 91. So I know that 1 to 42, but I don't even have to know 1 to 42. Uh, I, I'm sorry, 1 to 44, because that's the error. Here's the error, and here's the range. Two different things. So I don't even have to know 1 to 44, because the minute I pull my next card, let's say I pull my next card, and my card is, well, let's just say I pull this card, right? And my result is, oh, wait, I'm using the, I'm sorry. I'm jumping back and forth. Okay, so because this is the way I do it. I roll here, I only look at this, it's defense. Then I look at 91, and then I look at the, I know that it's an error, right? Because I pulled it's an error. And then I look at the error and I say, oh, it only goes up to 68. So 91 is way past that, so that's done. So there's no error, it's gonna be an out. Now I pull a card to see what kind of an out it is. And to, who was that to third base? The corner, it's a pop out. So then I would write pop out. You see, so that let me let me do that one more time the way I do it. So let's say I roll a four because I have to keep rolling fours because that's the only defense he has. So I roll the four on Mudcat Grant. Mudcat Grant is facing is facing Tommy Ag. All right, Mudcat Grant is facing Tommy Ag. I roll the four. And then a four, wait a second, there. Then I rolled a 43. Okay. 
So then I'm going to pull that immediately tells me pull a fast action card. Look right there. This is a range left field situation. So the first thing I want to know, I'm going to look at the number 43 and I'm like, hmm, that's kind of middle of the road number. So that could be a definite range hit. It could be a range hit. But I'm going to have to check my left fielder. In left fielder, it's Mac Jones in left field. Mac Jones is a range C. So I go to the Shea Stadium card. Range C is 1 to 42. A hit. Oh, boy. But I got a 43. So that's one above. So it's not a hit. It's going to be an out. And I usually make it a liner. Anything that's off, off the uh, defense, I usually make it a liner. Unless it's a ground ball. In other words, it's a fly ball. It's a line. He lined it to, to the outfield. If it's the first and third, I make it a line out uh, because I have line outs to second and short throughout the game. In other other ways that I do it, I have like a little a bunch of little uh, homebrews that I do. All right. So I'm playing. I'm doing like a very kind of fundamental step-by-step -step, um, use of fast action cards and dice. Okay. So hypothetically, Tommy Agee, just lined out to left field, okay? So I got to go to uh, – hold on one second, guys. I'm, I'm doing, like, a bunch of things at the same time. Sideline. Sideline strategy. Okay, I got to go with sideline strategy. So I'm looking for some freebies. I'm trying to track the uh, the extra players for the 69th season. Because even though I ordered the, the, the cards, his cards, I could still print them out here somewhere. Gotta, oh, I got to find where that is. I don't know where that is. Uh, let me go back. Um, I'm doing a tutorial on using fast action cards. So pay off pitch, payoff pitch, uh, X-Fringe, players, 1969. Okay, I think I found it. All right, so Rod Gasper is a second-place batter, and he's going to face Mudcat Grant. And uh, so he, he what what happened with him? 43, that was, oh, okay, we did him already. We played him already. All right, next batter, I believe. Doesn't matter. All right, so now we roll again. We roll a four, defense, right? And it's a 52. So let's pull a card. Let's see what it is. Error, first base. It's a 52. Hmm, could be an error on the first baseman. First baseman is Bailey. Bailey is a C first baseman. He's a C first baseman. I look under Shea Stadium, C error 1 to 44. I roll the 52, no error. So it's going to be lined, shot to the first baseman. Line out, first base, okay? Cleon Jones, I roll a 4, defense. But it's a 13. That, that number already tells me something. This saves me a lot of time, guys. So a 13, let me see what it is. I pull, error, third base. Well, guess what? A third base, 13, or with any base, it's an automatic error. Because look, 1 to 25, your best fielder is 1 to 25 at Shea Stadium. Every stadium is different. So a 16 is an automatic error. And what did it say? It said error, third base. So the third baseman... Right? Uh, I don't know if, if it's not. It may be too close here. Uh, okay, the third baseman committed an error for sure. Now we're going to see what kind of an error. It's an error. You got to know where all this stuff is. Hold on. Doing something else here. All right, so then you got to know where all this stuff is. And it's an error. What kind of an error on, ba on third base? 
right? Because that's what it was. That's what we decided. Yeah. It's a one base error. So he basically uh, 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 drops the ball. Ground ball hits off his, the heel of his glove. Should have had it. And he doesn't. And uh, so basically it's a one base error. So there's a runner on base because of that. All right. So now let's next batter. Ed Charles. It's a 90 this time. So I pull a card. First of all, if it's defense and it's a 90, I just check. I don't even pull a card. I just check here. Right? I know that's nothing. Now I pull a card, and it's basically an out to the second baseman. What kind of an out? Outs are hit, error out. Kind of an out to second baseman. It's a line out to the second baseman. So it's a line out, L4. All right? So that's how I'm using both dice. So I'm rolling, remember, I'm, I'm hypothetically rolling these two every time, but it has to be a four on defense for the defensive number to come out. So understand that. So I rolled the, all the dice and I get a 31. I have to check my defense error first, uh, error pitcher. My pitcher's a five, holy smokes. He's a five, which is really good. So he's a really good fielder. So basically it's a one to 25 is gonna be an error Right? 1 to 25 only is an error, but I rolled a 31. So that's beyond the 25, so there's no error. So that's a 1 3 put out. I mean, you can also look here, it could be a line out. Let me see. See what it says? It says uh, out. Yeah. Oh, it could be a potential double play if he's a B. Oh, look. So right here, you want to see if there's a run around first, which there was because somebody reached out an error. Now I got to roll for potential double play. My double play for this batter, an eight, and this uh, pitcher, a seven, is seven or less. So now I'm going to roll 2d6 for seven or less, and it's a four, so it's a one, six, three double play. That was very cool. That was very cool. It worked out. Mudcat Grant was an excellent, excellent fielder. Okay? How long is this video so far? 40-minute video on how to using fast action cards how to read them, and how to play them. Now, let's say I roll a hit. <clears throat> I pull a card. There's a run around first, and I roll a hit. Go to single, hard grounder into left field or right field, depending on the batter. Right-handed batter hits the left field. Left-handed batter hits the right field. Runner on first advances one base. Thank you very much. Let's say it's a double. Runners advance two bases. So first and second, one runner scores, one runner goes to third. Second and third on a double now. <coughs> Let's say there's runners on first and second. And I want to sacrifice. I look at this guy's a D bunter. So nobody expects him to bunt. So I'm going to look at D. It's a successful sacrifice hit to the pitcher. One, four. So both, both runners advance. Run around first. I want to steal. All right? I'm going to try to get the lead. My lead for Charles is a four. I rolled a four. Look at that. Amazing. So he gets his lead. There he goes. And it's going to probably be normal. Bateman is a forearm. So no, it's going to be a C4. And what did I show you guys before? A C4. Doesn't, uh, there you go. A C4 is very good opportunity. So a very op good opportunity for Ed Charles to steal. Right, I'm going to pull a card, stealing, and very good. He is safe under the tag. Look at that. Okay. So, again, um, this is how you play the fast action cards. I think I covered everything. So there are certain things you do over the, with the fast action cards. Basically, I don't really use these at the top, to be honest with you. Now, have I used them? Yes. I have used the top numbers, and i played complete games using the top numbers. And it's fine. You can do it. And sometimes I go back to it. Like I use dice and cards for a while, and I just use cards, and I just use dice. But I'll never, ever just use – I just said I just use dice. I would never, ever just use dice. I would always use some combination, either all cards or dice and cards. Never just all dice because then you got to look at charts. And I don't like – so these are all your charts laid out for you. I wish more companies – you know who else does this? who has amazing fast action cards, 
Replay Baseball. Replay Baseball has gorgeous, fast action cards. All right? So uh, I don't know um, what else to do. I could do one more before I sh close it down, shut it down. Uh, Mudcat Grant is going to face Ed Crankpool, right? So we roll, and we roll that. A four defense. So I'm going to pull a card. Defense. Range pitcher. Range pitcher. He's got good range. B. So a B is one to 32 is going to be a hit. And what do we roll? 33. So that's going to be an out. It's above the range. So that's so there's no hit. And now we're going to see what kind of an out it is. Remember. Hit, error, out. You look here in the middle because on top it says first base, third base. The corner is the corner. The middle is the middle infielders. And then the right is the outfielders. So this was to the pitcher. It's going to be pop out to the pitcher. Okay? So that's how that works. And I think I've covered everything really, really closely, really, really well, taking my time. Uh, DJ, John, 4444. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. All right. So I don't want, I feel like I've covered everything and I've taken my time to cover everything. I started off maybe a, a little uh, uh, um, shaky, but then I think I started, I, I developed a system. I like to do things kind of, I, I don't like to be really, I, I feel that, that it's more genuine. Like when I started this video, I had the game I was playing. I'm playing uh, inside pitch. I had it all set up. And I started cleaning up my table. I, I feel that I don't want to be, you know, stylized or or produced. I don't want. I want to be genuine. I want to show you, you know, what I do and how I do it. And you can pick up things that you find useful, and you can, you know, think about things that why does he do it that way? I should teach him about the way I do stuff. I had a friend say, you know what? I bet you you would like. Uh, inside pitch. So I said, yeah, I think so. And he started telling me why. And I said, okay, let me check them out. I checked them out. I ordered some cards for like seven bucks. So you can try it out. And I, I said, this is pretty cool. I want to learn something new. So then I ordered the 76 season. Now I'm all into it and I'm really enjoying it. All right. So I cleaned up my table and I started putting everything together and I developed a uh, 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 a structure so I could kind of play this out and I want, and I, I, I actually set the lighting and you can still see that there's issue here. A little bit of an issue there with the lighting. Here, I got that out of the, uh, out of the shadows. All right. So I showed you fast action cards playing an actual game that I'm going to be playing and putting into ball stat. I'm starting the season off. Um, I played the first top of the inning officially the second part of the inning, I just did constant um, defensive results off Mudcat Grant facing the Mets. I'm going to have to print out a card now. And then uh, I'm all into this game now, so I'm going to have to uh, – I guess I'm going to try to play it. Let me see if I can print that. Hold on a second. French player sets. But I don't want to buy them. I, I want to I wanna print them. Wait a second. Ah, uh, print. I'm looking for the print uh, inside. I'll pay off. Pitch fringe players. I wonder if I. Uh, it's somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Does anybody know where I can find? Does anybody know where I can find the uh, the fringe players for payoff pitch? That's what I'm looking for. The fringe players for payoff pitch, so I can print them out. Because when you buy the season, he gives you the, the the fringe players are free. Now, if you want to have his original card, then you can order those for fourteen bucks. So I'm trying to figure out where I can find that. So let me stop this video, guys. 
um, because this is supposed to be a tutorial, but I ran a 45 minute tutorial on fast action cards and I don't want to segue into a game, but I'm going to set up my game. I'm going to track this down and I want to play this game now because I'm all pumped up to play this game. I'm going to do a paper and pencil and simultaneously paper and pencil and also inputting it quickly into ball score, ball stat. Um, these are easy games to do that with because there's not a lot of changes. It's not like modern baseball. So Mudcat Grant may go the whole game and, and Tom Seaver may go the whole game as well. All right. So then there's very few changes, very few pinch hitting uh, 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 opportunities and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I think I did the, the tutorial and I hope this helps guys out there that want to learn. Uh, I, I think I, I took my time and I did it again and again. So people will see it and will be comfortable with it. All right. This is CP Cards and Dice saying I will be back with 69 opening day, April 8th, Seaver versus Mudcat Grant Expos at Shea.